it's actually the case that every cell in our body, every organ in our body and our brain is modulated or changes across the 24 hour day in a very regular and predictable rhythm. So let's start with getting up in the morning, getting into a mode of forward ambulation, walking or biking or running and generating optic flow in particular has a powerful effect on the nervous system. The effect it has is essentially to quiet or reduce the amount of neural activity in this brain structure called the amygdala and thereby reducing levels of anxiety. So getting outside for a 10 minute walk or a 15 minute walk will basically ensure that you're getting adequate stimulation of these neurons that convey to the brain that it's daytime and it's time to be alert. And it sets in motion a huge number of biological cascades within every cell and organ of your body, from your liver to your gut to your heart to your brain. It really sets things down the right path. Early in the day, we experience a natural and healthy bump in a hormone called cortisol. That pulse of cortisol is going to happen once every 24 hours, no matter what. It's going to happen and you get to time it. How do you time it? Primarily by when you view bright sunlight. Getting sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning is absolutely vital to mental and physical health. It is perhaps the most important thing that any and all of us can and should do in order to promote metabolic well-being, promote the positive functioning of your hormone system, get your mental health steering in the right direction. But two minutes would be a minimum. 10 minutes would be even better. And if you can, 30 minutes would be fantastic. The protocol is get outdoors, ideally with no sunglasses if you can do that safely, even if there's cloud cover. More photons, light information, are coming through that cloud cover than would be coming from a very bright indoor bulb. I'm a big believer, based on quality peer-reviewed data, that hydration is essential for mental performance. I force myself, essentially, to drink at least 16 and most days 32 ounces of water. I also put a little bit of sea salt in the water. How much sea salt, if you really want to get detailed, it's, I suppose it's about half a teaspoon. It's not much. As many of you know, neurons require ionic flow. What that means is neurons need sodium, they need magnesium, and they need potassium in order to function. We do tend to get dehydrated at night. Even if the day is not very hot, I try and top off or I try and make sure that I'm hydrated early in the day before I begin any work. At that point, I start thinking about and fantasizing about and craving caffeine, but I don't drink that caffeine yet. I purposely delay my caffeine intake to 90 minutes to 120 minutes after I wake up. The reason I delay caffeine is because one of the factors that induces a sense of sleepiness is the buildup of adenosine. The buildup of adenosine accumulates the longer we are awake. So when you wake up in the morning, your adenosine levels are likely to be very low. However, caffeine is an adenosine blocker and prevents adenosine from acting on that receptor. That's why you feel more alert because it's essentially blocking the effect of this sleepiness factor that we all create. The reason for delaying caffeine intake 90 minutes to two hours after waking is I wanna make sure that I don't have a late afternoon or even early afternoon crash from caffeine. Delaying caffeine at 90 minutes to two hours optimizes this relationship between adenosine and wakefulness and sleepiness in a way that really provides a nice consistent arc of energy throughout the day and brings energy down as I'm headed toward sleep and falling asleep. My primary objective early in the day is to get into a mode of being focused yet alert so that I can get work done. I found that the best way for me to achieve that state is through fasting. One of the most common questions I get are, what should I eat for my brain? Well, um, ironically enough, uh, one of the best things you can do for your brain is to not eat. Fasting increases levels of adrenaline, also called epinephrine in the brain and body. And when our levels of epinephrine and adrenaline are increased, we learn better, we can focus better. There's terrific data supporting that. You don't want epinephrine aka adrenaline, too high, but in its optimal range, adrenaline really provides a heightened sense of focus and the ability to encode, meaning bring in and retain, remember information. I just keep it fairly simple. I ingest water, caffeine from yerba mate and guayusa, and I drink my athletic greens with some lemon juice in it. That constitutes my fasting. And there are days when I do all those things. 
there are days when I do none of those things. Although most days, I would say about 355 days out of the year, I'm ingesting water, caffeine, and athletic greens during this period of fasting early in the day. And that's the period of time when I do my work. 